Hi friends, hope it's a bright sunny day for all of you. I'm Dr. Ganguly and today I'm going to discuss a peculiar topic and that is about the possibility of doing one master of science degree followed by one more master of science degree or it could be an M.Tech degree followed by one more M.Tech degree. Now, who would in his right mind try to do something like this? That's the question because typically at the end of a master's degree in any technology field, you have taken eight to 10 courses, you have done research and generally people are quite burnt out and they want to just take up a job. Now, there are some people who may continue with the PhD and we will leave these people out right at this time because these people may have different interests. But let us see people who want to take up corporate jobs and so on. So in that situation, I would say it is very rare to do this, but I came to know of some people who have done this. So I want to point this out to you because it may be useful. So now one of these people I know is a student who came to the US to study mechanical. And you would expect he would do his master's degree and then do a PhD or he would do his master's degree and take up a job. Now instead I came to know quite some time later that he was working in Microsoft. Came to know this from LinkedIn. And uh, then I checked further and I saw that he had actually done a master's degree first in mechanical and then immediately he did a master's degree in computer science. So what he was able to do in the department is that he was able to leave his supervisor at the end of his master's degree and go to a new supervisor in the same university but in the computer science department. And essentially his uh, first master's degree was in mechanical engineering with specialization in heat transfer and the second degree was in computer science with specialization in system theory. So of course system theory is a very mathematical discipline and so he blended in right well into this program. And later I asked him that why did he do this? And one of the reasons he mentioned is that he was quite bored with mechanical engineering. He did not see much scope in heat transfer. He didn't want to do a PhD and he didn't want to take up the kind of jobs which came his way following his heat transfer specialization. So he did this particular change and as it happens, it worked out very well for him. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, a second type of transition I've seen is some people starting in a field such as civil engineering say and then doing a master's degree in that in some areas such as structures and then this guy went off and did a second master's degree this was in data science. So again at the same university he was able to transition into a graduate uh, program there and again these people were able to get scholarships because they were of course very well qualified their GPA was good when you are in the university the transition is relatively easy to make you can simply leverage your good GPA. The fact that uh, you already have some knowledge about the system there, you know who are the professors who have funding and so on. And therefore you can make this transition into a different department and study a more marketable discipline such as uh, data science. So now of course this is for people who are looking out at corporate careers. It's not necessarily people who are going to do PhD, but at least these two people I am quite knowledgeable about. Now there is a third situation when such a thing could be useful in some cases. Now foreign students who come to US, if they are in certain areas, then they may face issues with getting jobs because there are a lot of regulatory frameworks around these areas. So for example, one could consider aerospace and this area is a very good area to do research in. But unfortunately what happens is that if you are in any country, it's very restrictive to get jobs in the government labs in those countries. And even if you are in the US, various government contractors, large companies and so on, are very reluctant to take people who are not US citizens or at least US permanent residents. And therefore, for a foreign student, it's not only difficult to do this degree, but in fact, it may be difficult to even get internships in these areas, in the companies and in the national labs. So one of the things you can do is that if you are in this area and you do not want to pursue a PhD and get into a faculty program, 
See, in that case, the problem is less because as far as universities are concerned, the process of giving visas in universities is much simpler than in private companies and certainly national labs. Universities are much more amenable to giving the H-1 visa to various type of people and later on these people can go ahead and get green card and so on and they can get a permanent faculty position in certain universities. So let's go back to this master's issue. So one of the things I came to know is some people went in this area and they were able to change to a data science field or to do some master's work in machine learning in the computational science field. So again, this will certainly help to broaden you out if you are facing this particular issue of uh, restriction in your career because of citizenship requirements and permanent residence requirements. Then you can consider changing to a new master's degree once you finish a master's degree and this second master's degree could be in a more broad area such as computational science, it could be in management systems, uh, information systems, operations research, data science and so on. So again, all these would use your basic background in terms of systems approach, mathematics and basic knowledge about modeling of any type of system and that is something which you can then leverage in the job market. Now one more thing I have found out and that's from a longer term perspective is that people who do these two types of master's degree later in life they become very productive in terms of patents and so on. And I think the reason for this is that a lot of the research work is very multidisciplinary and the fact that you did two master's degree means you have taken a large amount of coursework and essentially you have taken a course in one area, you have taken a course in a whole different area, maybe you took 8 to 10 courses in mechanical engineering, then you took 8 to 10 courses in computer science, you did two theses here and so the knowledge gain is very substantial. So in fact the knowledge gain here may be much more than a person who has done a master's plus PhD in the same field because this guy has gone very deep but the guy who has done two master's degree has incredible breadth and sometimes when you are working in a corporate set, setup, breadth may be more important than depth because essentially what you often do is you connect two things which are disjoint and you try to bring them together and the result of this is some novel concept comes out of here. So you may know something about mechanical engineering and then you know some aspect of computer science and so you combine your knowledge of say machine learning with your knowledge of partial differential equation solutions and all and you may create something like a physics based machine learning system. So that's one of the concepts you can come up with. So again that's an advantage of this kind of situation. So this was my take on this situation of doing one master's degree following one master's degree. It's a lot of work but it's useful for people who do not want to completely leave the technical field. Now there are some people who want to do the MS degree and then want to do the MBA degree and get into the business side of the equation. But then there are some people who may not be so interested in that. And also remember if you are planning to do the MBA degree, funding for that is quite difficult. So you may need to work a few years to get that money or take a loan. Whereas if you are going for one more master's degree, then it's relatively easy to get some kind of funding in the university. Remember if you are in the same university, then you know the professors, you know the system, you know who has got the grants and so on. So you can get a TA shape or something in some place. In fact, I know of guys who are doing work in computer science department but their TA ship is in some math department where they are teaching some course and so on. So all these combinations are possible so you can explore these and see. So that was my take for you today on masters after masters and I hope you benefit from this video. Stay tuned to my channel for more such videos. See you soon.